And here is our lecture on the elements of effect and setting. So one of the first things we want to keep in mind is that our use of setting can be very broad, can be very narrow. Here are four quick scenes from Disney films, and each of them have a really significant reason for including this particular setting um, and what they're doing with those settings. And hopefully by the end of this video, you would be able to write a 10-page essay on the impact of setting in these particular films. Not that we're going to, but you could. So when you were in third or fourth grade, maybe you started talking about how setting is time and place. And here's kind of the official definition of that. And when we look at something like Winnie the Pooh, we can see that it's a very childlike setting. Right? The map is there. It's included in the front of the book. We have where the different people live and some of the geographical features. Okay. When we get a little bit older, we start expanding that definition to include the geographical, historical, social, and cultural context of a work. And the rest of this video is going to talk about all of those to make sure you're clear on what they are and then talk a little bit about what, what the effects of setting are and how you would analyze them, what you would say if you were focused on analysis of setting in a short story or in a longer piece. So here's an example. Tolkien includes a map in the front of his book as well. It's not quite so childlike. Um, some of those places are pretty dark where you don't really want to go to Mordor, but it includes some of the same features, right? It includes some of the geographical features. We know where the forests are. We know what's going on here. And then it puts, puts things in, puts places and the people who live in those places kind of in, per, in relationship to each other. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So when we talk about locale, we may be talking about really broad categories. A whole planet might be the setting. A region might be the setting. You have to look at what details does the author give you and then focus on, okay, here's the big picture. Okay, And sometimes those big pictures would include like an entire planet, Yoda's home. We see a very small section of this planet, but kind of the inference we draw is that the rest of the planet is just like this. There aren't different regions. It's all big swamp planet, but it's there for a reason, right? Yoda lives on a planet that is full of life. He's the master of the force, right? In fact, there's probably too much life here. There's too much water here. And as we talked about in characters and conflict, characters... Um, possessions and where they live can reflect something about their personality. And there's Yoda's little hut, even though he's probably one of the most powerful beings in the galaxy. Um, he lives in this very simple traditional hut. All right, so that's the broad picture. The narrow picture can be um, city, town, neighborhood. Some things take place in one building. And even some pieces of literature take place in just one room. Right? Whether it's a short story or something else, uh, maybe it just takes place in a prison cell. So you want to notice how broad or how specific these settings are. And most everything we're talking about applies to the real world as well as the fictional. So here's a building that is a very famous um, location for many films, right? A lot of political thrillers, a lot of other things. Everybody recognizes this building. Um, I could list it Independence Day. I think it gets blown up there because of its symbolic meaning, right? But it's one place. It doesn't, a lot of these things don't happen um, in broader places, right? A small place can suffice. Okay. So let's talk about those elements. First, geographical. So this is a geographical map, a topographical map, of the, the kingdom in Game of Thrones. And just as in the real world, topography can tell you a lot, right? Who lives in a desert? Who lives where there's water? Where are there mountains that isolate? Where are there trade routes available? Where is there exploration available? Um, and so authors often, just like... Winnie the Pooh's author and, and the other ones we saw earlier help envision their world, right? So that they can see how these different places and, and features influence who lives where and what kind of people they are, what do they value, how do they live, right? So those features can include mountains, deserts, anything you'd see on a topographical map today, those can be part of it, right? Something set in, near the Grand Canyon is going to be different than something set in the plains of you know, Kansas or something. Geographical elements can also include 
human made features, right? This is the Alamo. If you set your story at the Alamo, even if it has nothing to do with the Alamo itself, you're saying something, you're choosing that setting because of the connotations it has. Maybe you're gonna go against them and use it in an ironic sense, but you wanna pay attention to that. Where are the dams, the walls, the buildings? What are the style of the buildings and why? Okay. Time elements can be broad or very specific. It depends on what the author's trying to convey. So in this particular scene, no spoilers I hope, Planet of the Apes, the original, um, it's the final scene. So now we know that the whole movie has taken place in the future rather than maybe in the past, which we might have thought from before. And that's, it changes everything to have it be the future of the Earth. It's very shocking. It's a big twist at the end. Um, it can be a very specific time period, right? So I'm not talking just about the Halloween and the Easter movies and the Christmas movies and Santa and that kind of thing. We're talking about notice when an author uses a specific season or holiday or significant dates, even if they're not reenacting a particular historical event. Okay, this movie is, and so that matters, but they don't always. Time of day can matter. In this iconic image, um, it's set at dusk because the sun is going down for a particular reason. This is how the Nazis know that Indiana Jones is there um, in the dig because of his distinct outline. But it's also the going down of the sun, the going down of hope to a certain degree, right? So notice when it's dark, when it's evening, things are chosen for a reason. Same thing with historical time periods, right? Westworld, you probably shouldn't be watching it. It's not appropriate for high school students, but the idea that it's set in the old West and why, and if you watch this show, you'll know it could have been said, they could have created any kind of world, but the West fits the values of the people who are coming to it with its violence and its power struggles and all of those. Okay, same thing with other historical time periods. Okay, this is probably one of the most famous Shakespearean speeches, the St. Crispin's Day speech. Um, again, it's a historical thing, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. Historical elements can include people, political or social figures from a time period. Shakespeare appears in so many TV shows, so many movies. This is Dr. Hugh, right? Dr. Who, so it's futuristic and yet Shakespeare plays an important role um, in some of the episodes. And particularly in sci-fi, but in other works too, you get a lot of different life forms and the different cultures, the different values um, that are coming from these different places all conflict and things need to be resolved. What the Klingons value is not necessarily what members of the Federation value. Um, depends on who you are, what kind of um, place you come from, what the experiences have been there. So all of that is part of the social elements of setting that you could analyze. Political power. How are things structured? Even Pirates of the Caribbean, they're a bunch of pirates, but they have a code. They have laws. They have a system of government. And that's an important part of what happens in the story. Now, obviously, Harry Potter's all about Hogwarts and the educational system. Um, so that's a big piece of it, the traditions that go through, what's happened, who's been at Hogwarts, how have they developed, what their personalities were, their conflicts, their talents, their interests. It's a big part of that particular um, series. So you always want to look at what is the author saying, but also look at what's not included. There's not a lot of religion in Harry Potter. That's a conscious choice, right? How people live, that's a social element of setting too. Their housing, their recreation, their occupations, how they spend their time, what are they doing? And again, we saw that in the opening slide with the four scenes from Disney films, right? Disney spends a lot of time telling you about that, the daily life. And cultural elements, right? A lot of times these cultural elements are gonna end up being sources of conflict as they are here. And then lastly, material goods. That's part of setting as well. So in this scene in Wally, the fact what they're wearing, how they're eating, the complete abandonment of any <laughs> desire for independence, they're dependent on their machines. That's an important part of who they are. And the transition back going back to earth is gonna be important as a theme in this particular story. 
Artistic expression can be references to art in the real world that are included, such as in this example here, um, but it can also include original art. So for example, um, in Lord of the Rings, Tolkien creates some poetry and that poetry is very powerful. In fact, he creates an actual whole language for the elves, but he's creating that for a reason. Or we see what serves as theater in a particular time period that's made up. So you want to notice those details. How does this all fit in? How do people express themselves? How do they reach that top level? We were talking about the other day in Maslow's theory of hierarchy of needs. So if we're going to watch this, you can very clearly see in the Hunger Games chariot scene, um, look it up on YouTube if you haven't watched it, the contrast between the life in the districts and the life here and the waste and the style of dress and the personality and the freedom to have all of that, right? Versus the tributes who are going to be sacrificed. All right, now we're going to move into effects of setting. So it can change the mood and that can be through music, either described directly, again, ref referencing something that already exists or describing the music or the background noise, right? It creates some kind of feeling in the, in the viewer or the reader. Obviously, this is one of the, the most common, the Jaws theme, right? Suspense, you know somebody's going to get munched up when you hear that music. It's never good. Weather is important. Um, it's not just a plot point that we need the flood to be knocking out the gate and some of those things, but water is reflective of life. And so there's too much life in this park, right? It's gone amok. It's gone, a, it's gone way over the top. Right? And so the weather is important. Sometimes it's used ironically, but oftentimes it's being used to reinforce something else that's going on in the story. So think about that. Temperature is the same way. This scene could have been on a very hot planet. So you would be wondering, well, why is it in the cold? Right? He's kind of shut down and cold and distant from the rebellion. Right? And he could have had to hide inside of an animal to protect himself from the sun, but it's for the cold. Assume that those are intentional choices, right? A lot of anger and passion and conflict tends to happen when it's hot. So you might think about that. Light and darkness. Obviously in films, it's very powerful. But in literature, you want to be thinking about how often, what kind of light, what kind of darkness, when is the darkness. All those things are conscious choices. Right? Setting can provide background information. So Camp Half-Blood in the layout of all the different camps for the, chil the, the children of the gods, where they live, their conflicts, their values, all of that is an important part of what's going on. And obviously some big things happen in this particular setting. Okay, foreshadowing. Setting can be used to foreshadow in this particular scene how the computer who's about to take over is in the center. And the, the, um, the men are in a pod, small right? And he, computer has all the power. You know it's not going to turn out well for them. Okay. Jurassic Park, I had mentioned a minute ago about how there was too much water and too much life in actual Jurassic Park. But the movie opens with a scene of um, the professor studying in a dry, dusty, lacking life environment of the Badlands. And that's what the study of the dinosaurs are at this particular point. And then when he gets to the island, the first scene you see is the waterfall. Life, it's lush. And then we end up realizing it's too much. It's going to get out of control. But that was on purpose. So symbolic meaning of setting. And particularly changes of setting. Okay, And then setting can reveal character. Okay, We kind of talked about this a little bit when we talked about character. So this Sherlock Holmes's room. It's got some of his prized possessions in it, the style of it, what he values, his skills, his abilities. All of that can provide background. So pay attention to what's described in a character's room or space. What do they own, right? That's all part of setting. Social status, that's kind of an obvious one, right? What kind of house you live in. Think of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh and his personality and how his, his little uh, stick house is always falling down versus here, right? The Abbey. And in this particular TV show, the Abbey contrasted with village life and then the life of some of the really unfortunate people in this time period and in this setting, right? It's all juxtaposed. Character changes, right? Again, that tie between setting and character. I don't think this needs any explanation. 
Okay. Setting can be a reflection of what's going on internally in the mind, psychologically. So obviously the fact that he lives in this house and where this house is and the weather around this house, all of that is part of the suspense and part of the horror that is psycho. Okay. This is a scene from Black Panther and they have a particular value, right? So they have the elders here. Elders are very important and they're kind of a group, even though they have a king and that's being challenged, right? Their priorities, their beliefs, their values are being challenged at this point in their history as they have to figure out how much to interact with the real world. All right, and that concludes this lecture on the elements of and effects of setting.